olo e pai pai lima kafo no ke ya homana hele loa mai mai hilo ale kofo ke ya vai ana nui today we're uh, celebrating the third aha aloha olelo festival uh, held by Puna Leo Kona here at Big Island Honda in Lanihau, Konakai Opua. And this festival is about the love for our language. And the theme of this year is Iko Olelo no Keola. In language, there is life. And this theme comes from a well-known Olelo no Eo, a well-known Hawaiian proverb, Iko Olelo no Keola, Iko Olelo no Kamake. In language, there is life and in language, there is death. And we're looking at this year, 2016 makes 120 years since the 1896 legislative act that basically banned Hawaiian language in all public and private schools um, in the sense that they they said what any school that did not uh, utilize English as a primary medium of education would not be recognized by the government and so from 1880 to 1902 there were about or in 1880 there were about 150 Hawaiian medium schools recognized by the government by 1902 there was zero and in 1880 there were less than 60 English schools recognized by the government by 1902 there's over 160. It was at that time that a lot of the social issues Hawaiians struggled to started to started to arise. So when we look at homelessness, when we look at obesity, when we look at drug rates, when we look at incarceration, when we look at the educational struggles, when we look at um, poverty and all of these issues that Hawaiians face, we didn't face these things prior to 1896. These are issues that, that came about after the loss of our language. And so, Iko'olelo no Keola, Iko'olelo no Kamake, by losing our language, by utilizing English, it almost resulted in the death of our people. And unfortunately, we were able to preserve enough to, to revitalize it at one point, to begin to revitalize it. And since the 1980s, with Punana Leo being incorporated in Hawaiian language preschools, we've seen the revitalization of Hawaiian language. And in that, we've seen the revitalization of the Hawaiian people, of our culture, of our, of our history of our practices, of our perspectives. And so truly, this is about Iko'olelo no Keola. Through our language, our language is really probably the only way that we will reclaim our, our rightful our rightful spot as a thriving people in our homeland and so that's where our life is it's in our language and through our language we will solve every other issue our people have and that's what that's what today is about it's like you can't separate the two you cannot separate the yeah. two that exactly you know and we talked about a lot about with Mauna Kea it's, it's all one issue and um you know and you look back in the 1800s if you look at the governmental reports from the minister of public instruction to the president of the republic it says in their government reports 1896 that this will be the last time a government report ever has a mention about Hawaiian medium schools. The schools are gone, they're disappearing and they will never appear in a governmental report again. And that was that was their that was their perspective, that was their hope and they knew that through taking away our language and forcing us to speak theirs, they would take away our identity and force us to, to try to claim theirs knowing that we can't and we just be a lost people. And that's, that's the status of our people for the last hundred years. But this language is really the revitalization of our language is truly revitalizing our people. And we can see with the kids, they stand up there proud, proud to, to say their, their, you know, their speech, proud to share their mo'oko'ohau, proud to dance, proud to chant. And those are things that we didn't see in, in children perhaps 20, 30 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. Um, so it's definitely all connected, but it's about undoing those efforts, these, these systematical governmental efforts to really denationalize and Americanize us. And speaking Hawaiian language is resistance. Just like protesting on a mountain or just like protesting the Iaupuni or Ho'opili. Every time we speak our language, every time I refuse to speak English, that's a sign of resistance. <laughs> These three wahine, not only parents at Punana Leo Kona, also teachers at our Hawaiian Immersion School up the road. Mahalo ya uko, pai pai li makako. Now, I don't know if you had a chance to read the Na'iau Puni Constitution. As far as I know, it's English. Yeah, true. I have not got, I have not had the chance to read it. I've been really busy with this event. I do plan on, on reading it um, in depth and really looking at it. But yes, it's in English. And in fact, 
there were people who requested to speak on the floor in Na'iaupuni in Hawaiian and they were shot down. So that tells you that, again, with looking at that structure, it's not going to do much better than the structure that we have. The state does not support our language and I'm not going to rely on Na'iaupuni or any state um, created entity, no matter what they call themselves, to do it as well. These things happen in the community. These things happen grassroots and, and this event and events like this, but even this event, this is not optional. I truly believe it's not optional. This is something that has to be had in our community. No choice. We have to have this event in our community every single year. It's the only way we're going to normalize Hawaiian language is to act like it's normal, is to treat it as if it's normal. Um, and if we're going to continue to hold Hawaiian events, but we're going to utilize English for the sake of not hurting someone's feelings, uh, we're not going to progress ourselves anywhere. So this event is not about hurting people's feelings. It's not about being exclusive. It's about providing our speakers in a venue where they can come and enjoy a family day, enjoy a normal day in their normal language. And, and that's, what, um, that's what this is about. So Na'iel Puni, with their all of those politics, or lack there, or whatever you want to call it, um, not a fan of it, not a fan of it, not a believer in it. I believe in by the people, for the people. And that's what Na'iel Puni is anything but that. It's a top-down process, 150 privileged few who are allowed to speak, who are allowed to have their mana'o heard. And those of us who are not willing to sign our name to the American paper, like our kupuna did in 1893, and they said, We never did affix our signature to the paper of the enemy. And, and I will not affix it to, the, uh, to Act 195 and so on and so forth. I will continue to resist and struggle like this. <laughs> You can only suppress the truth for so long, you know, and, and we see that with the status of Hawaii. For how many years we thought that we were a part of America, and then along comes Dr. Keanu Sai, and he just blows everybody's doors and flips everything around. So the truth can only be hidden for so long, and it's going to come out, and, and sooner or later people are going to realize that the whole, that attached to this whole issue is our language. At the core of this whole issue, the struggle for identity, the struggle for, for sovereignty or independence or, or whatever it is, it starts with our language. It continues with our language and it ends with our language. And that is the source of it all. The language is that binding cord that holds the hook to the fishing line. The language is that binding cord of our identity. And, and that I, I believe to be, to be so true. Um, and we're seeing the truth of that through the revitalization of our language and all the effects that it has. <laughs> Thank you.